Welcome back to the Slay Your Day podcast. Today, I have a very special episode because as you all know, we are about to be in these amazing warm summer months. And I want to chat with you, especially the mompreneurs out there that are kind of dreading going into summer. You know what I mean? You got a little bit of FOMO. You know, you got to work. You can't be with your kids. You're like, oh my gosh, the kids are going to be home. How am I going to work, you know, in a quiet area? So today I want to chat with you about the ultimate summer schedule and how to work less earn more, and enjoy the quality time with your kids, with your family this summer. And I know for me, I've got two kiddos at home. I have an almost three and an almost six-year-old. And my six-year-old is usually at school during the day. And then my almost three-year-old is out at the pool, at the park. Like he's very busy. He has a very busy schedule. But now that there's two home, like, and it just summertime gets crazy, I feel like we need to talk about what the summer schedule looks like and how do you optimize your time and how do you be productive when the kids are home? And maybe you're like me and you actually want to be with your kids over the summer and you want to spend time with them and you want to be involved in all of the activities. So today I want to jump into some tips that are going to help you to not just maximize your productivity, but I want to dive into some tips that are going to help you to make more money in less time so you can really spend that quality time with your kids this summer. And before I dive into these tips, I just want to share with you some of the challenges that parents face when it comes to summertime, because I've already mentioned a few, but childcare can be one of those challenges. Maybe you don't have the same type of childcare that you had when the kids are in school. Maybe time management is a problem and you're like, I just can't balance or juggle my work commitments when my kids are home versus when they're in school. Maybe for you, you have a seasonal workload where you're super busy over the summer. I used to be in wedding planning and summertime was a very busy time of the year, more so than winter was. So, and you know, that changes now that I'm in Florida and obviously I'm not in that industry anymore, but you could have seasonal workloads where maybe you're busier in the summertime than you are in other seasons of the year. Another thing that I know a lot of parents feel is financial pressure. And this is probably not just in summertime, but I'm sure in the summer, you're probably taking more vacations. You're probably spending more money. So working less and making more is probably something that you need to do, right? That you're like, I need to make more money because we're spending more money. And then finally, and this was me in the past, FOMO, fear of missing out on my kids' summers. Like I remember being in my office and looking because my office used to face our backyard in our old house. And I remember I would watch the nanny and my kids in the pool and I'd be like, but I want to be there. Like I want to be with the kids and I want that to be me in the pool with them. So ever since about probably two years ago, I was very, very strategic about how I planned out my summers and the workload that I would take on. So two things, number one, the income that I was making wouldn't drop. But also number two, I could spend more time with my kids and show up and be present. And I know for so many of you mompreneurs, this is what you want. You're like, I still want to continue not just making the kind of money I was making, you know, while the kids were in school, but you would love to make more money while you're also being able to be present with your kids, especially over these precious summer months. So I want to talk first and foremost about streamlining your work. So you know how important this is. I've talked about this on previous episodes, but streamlining everything. I mean, from your business to the systems that you have inside your home, it's so important to boost your productivity, your efficiency, you know, even the meals that you're doing, you know, that you're making for the kids. Like, what are you making? When are you making them? How are you streamlining your workload? Like all of this is so important. And automation tools, project management, different softwares and delegation techniques will be your best friend, will be your best friend, not only now as you go into summertime, but once you get the right system, once you get the right flow, this will change your life. So I want to share with you just a few of the automation tools that I use and that my team use that allow us to work very strategically and not have to work six, eight hours a day, very focused time to really squeeze all the juice out of the time that we are working to maximize our output output and our productivity and really fuel into our prospective clients, clients, and team. And those are things like email automation. So personally, 
my team and I, we use ConvertKit. I know there's MailChimp. I mean, there's so many email automations that you can use. I've talked about this before. Get yourself email automation for all your drip sequencing. If you don't know what that is, it just means like when someone signs up for an email, there's like a few different sequencing emails that come after that. So it's really important to have that set up. So get yourself, I'll even link it, a link for ConvertKit that I use. So you have the link, you can get signed up with that. The next thing that is really, really so important to have as an automation tool is your social media management. If you don't have someone like I do that's, you know, in your business every single day, that's like, you know, checking into your different groups and posting on your stories and posting on your different channels. And you probably should have both anyway, something like a Hootsuite. So something like a Hootsuite or a buffer that allows you to schedule and automate all of this. Like imagine all of your social media being automated for you and it goes up when you, when you schedule it and you know, it interacts and does all of these things that a person would be doing, right? But it's way less money and it's totally cheaper. So social media management is a must if you want to work less hours and be with your kids and show up and be present over summertime. The next thing is a CRM. So your customer relationship management. What is that system that you have? Something like a Salesforce, a HubSpot, it helps to automate your customer database. And this is anything from your sales processes, customer support, workflows. So again, if you don't have this in place or you're like, Sandy, what is this? What would be great for you to tap into is my automations training. So if you just go over to sandragland.com forward slash automate, you'll get an entire training on all of these automations, email, social media, CRM, team. I mean, like, any aspect of your business that you can think of, guarantee there's an automation for it. So you definitely want to go check out that training. So for sure, you've got to be focused in on your automation tools. The next thing is your project management software. I have used multiple project management softwares and I'll tell you the ones that are my favorite. So there's ones that are called, there's Trello, there's Asana, there's Monday.com. I have used all of these. And I feel like I I like different features of each of them. Trello is more popular for like visual project management. So you can see what you're creating like boards and lists and it's more visual per se versus the other ones. Asana is more of a project management platform and it it's great for team collaboration because everyone kind of has their files. But my personal favorite that I liked a little bit better than all of these is monday.com. This is great for tracking like your prospective clients, your leads, It's totally customizable. So you have these customizable workflows, automated notifications, like you can track, you can plan, you can organize. It's just like very versatile. So definitely check that out, monday.com for project management software. But any of these are good. It's it's really like you have to know yourself and what you're going to use it for. All of these are great project management software. So I would definitely figure out which one works best for you. And then finally, delegate. Delegate everything and anything that you can. And what I'll tell you, a good rule of thumb is if it is not not allowing you to leverage where your time is going, like the thing that you're doing, if you're putting so much time, effort, and energy into it, and it's not an income producing activity, like it's not bringing you in the big bucks, you should not be doing it. There should be someone on your team. There should be someone in, you know, your organization that is supporting you with this. And what I'll also say about this is before I had a team, yes, I was doing everything. I was wearing all the hats. However, very soon into running my business, did I realize, okay, I can't do this all. I can't scale the business if I'm the one doing everything. So I made a list of all the things that I was doing, like literally soup to nuts, made a list of everything from social media to emails to everything. I mean, literally every single thing that I was doing on a weekly basis, I tracked. And then I looked at those and I said, what are the things that are the most time consuming or that I don't want to do? And like almost like two at a time, two to three at a time, I started delegating and outsourcing uh, outsourcing these tasks, game changer, game changer. I mean, my business literally year after year after year got better, 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 better. So start to leverage these delegation techniques, figure out maybe it's a virtual assistant and this person can help you with, and I gave you guys some tips on where to find these virtual assistants. So like Fiverr or Upwork, freelancer.com, like all of these are great places to find this support. If you have a team, team collaboration, maybe over the summer months, you are now delegating more of what you usually do throughout the year to someone else on your team. That's another great way to start delegating some tasks that you usually take on. And then 
outsourcing, right? When you can outsource those non-core activities and think of things like accounting or like IT marketing. If you do any PR, there's a great agencies that can help you with those things. So these are all of the things that you can outsource. It's not necessarily hiring a VA. It's outsourcing different companies or agencies or organizations that really like take over that brunt of the work, that umbrella of the work. So you can focus on what's going to bring in the money for you, what's going to make the biggest difference for you. So that's what I would say in terms of delegation. Now, the next thing that we have to talk about is maximizing those revenue streams. And I'm sure all those ears are going to perk up because obviously who doesn't want to maximize revenue streams, right? So I want to talk about a couple things. What is your main offer? Like, I want you to really think about if you have the next three months to dedicate to summertime, what is that main offer or product or service? And two things I want you to think about. Number one, how much are you charging for it? And then number two, how much time does it actually take from you to fulfill on. Because if you have an offer, a high ticket offer, and it doesn't even have to be an offer. It could be a product. It could be a service. It could be any of those things. How much time does it actually take for you physically, the only person, the sole person to do this, to facilitate from start to finish, right? So that's what I want you to look at. Because when you're able to make more money and work less hours, yes, you're delegating. Yes, you're outsourcing. But the main thing that you're focusing on is the thing that will bring in the most amount of income come with the least amount of output, of effort from you, right? So what is that? So it's really important that you know what that is. And what I would suggest is doing an audit of your business, of your offers, of your services. And maybe you create a completely new summertime offer where you're like, you know what, for the next three months, I'm going to offer and I'm just throwing this out there. Maybe it's you're in coaching like I am. And you're like, you know what, for the next three months, I'm going to create this coaching program or mentorship or incubator of X amount of time over the next three months. And you meet with them, you know, once a week or once a month even, you know, so figure out what that is for you and what you're getting for that, what the value is. So you can make sure that it is a high quality, but a higher producing offer product service. So you're going to make more money, but you don't have to be the one to facilitate everything into that. You can bring in, you know, people to support you with the output of that, whether it's the, the team that supports you, whether it's a VA, it's, you know, outsourcing. So figure out what that core product or service is for you and then structure everything else around that. So a couple more things that I want to emphasize are about the goal of increasing the income when you're working fewer hours. And, and I have a few points that I want to touch on. So I, I have about six points I want to touch on for this. So number one, like I was saying, focus on the high value activities. So identify the tasks that generate the most significant impact and revenue for your business and prioritize those activities. Because when you prioritize, that's going to be the thing that's going to move you forward faster, allow you to make more money in last time. Number two, streamline and automate. How do you streamline whatever that is, the product, the offer, the service? How do you streamline that? I would highly, highly recommend you have SOPs. If you don't know what SOPs are, they're called standard operating procedures, which means essentially what is from start to finish? How do you do that task? So you should have SOPs for every task in your business, whether you do it or someone else does it. So if that person's out or you're out, someone else could pick it up and know exactly what to do. I would automate as much as possible. Again, so automation not only saves you time, but there's a lot of error that can be made in just human error. And when you have automation, you're less likely to have that. The next thing that I would do is I would optimize my pricing and packaging. And like I mentioned, I would explore having options to increase your prices or create premium packages that offer additional benefits that you don't normally have. So what does that mean? Now you get to restructure product offer service and offer something completely new that you never, that you've never had before to your audience, but restructure it in a way that's going to be a higher value, a higher ticket item, but you're restructuring to give 
lots of value, but in not, you know, something where you're doing extreme amount of hours per day to deliver on that. Number four, I would leverage passive income streams. So I would look at affiliate marketing. I would look at even something like network marketing is great if you're already using a product or service. I've talked about the drinks that I drink before um, that give me energy. And that's something that I just share that it's something that I, I already drink, I already use. I also, as you guys know, I share my Amazon affiliate link. So things like even in the background, if you guys can see there's this gorgeous, like you can't really see it in the, wait, which way? That way. <laughs> there's this gorgeous flower arrangement behind me right now. And it's in the vase. It's really cool. The vase is like a purse. It's like a glass purse. It's beautiful. And so now I keep this in my office, but it's also on my Amazon store. And I share things that my kids love, like s'mores makers and snow cone makers and like really fun stuff that we're actually using that I have in my Amazon store that if anyone buys it, I make a percentage of that. So like, why not? If you're already utilizing these things and you're already doing them, why not leverage passive income streams? And then of course you have things like real estate and, you know, we can really go down down that rabbit hole, but I would really, really look at what are some things that you can organically and naturally integrate into the business or into the world that you're already doing. Again, like Amazon affiliate, like who doesn't buy from Amazon? So just look into that and see if there's something that fits your lifestyle and what you're already doing. Number five, I would look at the upsell. I would look at upselling opportunities to offer additional products or services to your existing clients, increasing your revenue per client. So maybe you have clients that you're already working with and that are already in your world, know who you are, know your products and your services. Is there something else that you can use as an upsell to now, again, serve more to the clientele that you already have, create that upsell, and then in turn, obviously make more money, but you're not working any more hours. And then finally, for this tip here, this is all about collaboration. So collaboration and outsourcing and collaborating with other professionals in your industry, or maybe even not in your industry, complementary fields, maybe just something that you can tie in very organically and naturally together, where you can come up with new opportunities, joint ventures, maybe it's events, maybe it's projects or just something completely new that's not going to take up a lot of your time and you can divide up the work right? When it's not only you, you can either, you know, if it's two people, you can cut that in half. It's, if it's three or more, you know, simple math there, you know, thirds or quarters. So it really just depends on like, what do you want to create? And it really boils down to, this is what it all boils down to. Okay. If you are truly ready to design your schedule, to work less, to earn more, and to have this quality time with your kids. Heck, maybe it's with your spouse or for yourself. What I really, really, really want you to focus on, this is designing your summer schedule. Like, what is your ideal summer schedule look like? Do you want to work for, I don't know, two, three hours a day, four hours a day? Like, what does that look like for you? Because you have to know the roadmap first. You have to know like, okay, if I only want to work four hours a day, I got to start there. Because if I'm only working four hours a day, what am I getting done? What am I putting my time and attention on? Versus just letting the day's you know, really run you. And now summer's almost over. And and now you're just starting to get into like the swing and get comfortable with the schedules that you've created just by them creating themselves. So it's really important to know what that summer schedule is first. What do you want it to be? What do your kids want it to be? And then design everything else around that. Because again, it's not going to happen by accident. And I think that it's really important to have your time management, all of these tools and techniques and automations that we're talking about, create a routine. So for sure, not only does mom need to have that strong routine, but your kids should have one, your spouse, like everybody needs to get on board with like summer schedule 2023. This is the routine for the morning. This is mom's work schedule. And then in the afternoons, like this is what we're doing. And for me, like I love to make it fun, like baking classes, camp, you know, arts and crafts, traveling. Like we're going to be traveling a lot this summer and it's going to be like, I can work from anywhere, which is great. But if you're someone that really needs to be where you're at and maybe you don't travel or you, or you can't travel, you've got to start here. You've got to start with like, 
what are what are the offers, products, and services that I have? And then how do I create everything around that to make sure that I can fulfill and support that and give it the time and the attention that it deserves and that it needs for my clients to be happy and to start to scale that, right? Like it gets to be so fun and so expansive. However, you've got to know what it looks like. You've got to know like, what does that look like in terms of your schedule, what your kids are doing? And not only that, but when you get to work, what are you working on? What are you focusing on? Because at the end of the day, if you just start to like, you know, open up your computer and you start to get to work and you're like, well, what am I working on for today? That will never fly. That'll never work. You'll never end up working less hours. You'll work more hours, make less money. And then the thing is completely turned around. (laughs) So really, really, really want you to hone in on designing your summer schedule. What does it look like? What are the routines? Set clear boundaries. You guys know I'm super firm on setting clear boundaries and doing this with everybody, with your family, with your clients, for yourself. Everybody in your environment should know what those clear boundaries are. And then really just get the routines, get the routines in place for the activities, like the really fun stuff, the travel, the camps, all that good stuff. And then also for the work schedule, that's going to be really important. And then my final tip for you is how do we have quality time, quality family time when it comes to embracing the summer and being with our kids and showing up and working and being able to be with them and really enjoying this time together. And what I'll tell you is that having that quality time doesn't happen by accident. Like you really have to be intentional about how you show up and the experiences that you're creating. Heck, it could be you're just like taking a blanket outside with some sandwiches and you're having a picnic in your backyard, but you've got to be so clear about that quality time that you're creating. You know, you got to be so clear about like, what are you discussing? What are the conversations that you're having? You guys heard on the last episode when Jared and I do our dates together, like our, our Jared and Sandy relationship days, I'm going in there with conversation questions. I'm going in there with questions and what are we talking about? What do I want to discuss? What's going good? What's not? What do we need to work on? Do the same thing with your kids, you know, like ask them, what do they love the most about summer? What do they want to do more of? What do they not want to do? You know, like having these questions is going to make the summer at the time, the quality time so much better than just showing up and hoping for it to be a great summer. Imagine having a summer where you get to be showing up for your kids and having quality time with your kids, but also making more money than you make during the school year. Because guess what happens? You get this into play now. This is going to roll into next school year. This is going to roll into next year. And now the business gets better, more exciting. You're making more income. You're making more impact. And it just gets better and better and better. So I hope you take these tips. I hope you implement them, not just for summertime. I mean, use it now for summertime because baby, we are here. We are in June. It is summertime. The kids are out of school. They're excited, but they got their programs, their activities, their camp and travel and we still have work to do. You know, we can't just like cruise along for the next three months and not show up and then expect clients to be there in the beginning of September. So this will help you to show up, to make more money, make more impact, but also have amazing, phenomenal quality time with your kids. So I know there are so many mamas, working mamas out there that need to hear this information. So do me a favor and share this episode with three friends that you know are working moms, want to show up this summer for their kids, want to have the fun. They don't want the FOMO and they want to make more money because that's a big deal. You can't, you can't just want to like cruise along and you know, not do anything this summer. Cause like we can still have fun, but let's have a massive income and impact as well. So thank you guys so much for being here. I think I'm going to start making these episodes a little bit shorter so you can come in, you can get the information and get out. I would love to keep these, you know, between like 20 to 25 minutes and just really come in here and give you so much value. And then you take it and you go attack the world and slay your day.